Hey there, Music Maker. In today's video, I'm going to unpack one of the most essential tools for any guitarist out there, triads. By the end of this lesson, you're going to know what a triad is, how to construct triads, how to apply them immediately to your own playing today, and what to do with those triads once you master the basics. Triad is probably a term you've at least heard before on the guitar, but in case you're entirely unfamiliar with them, the term triad simply means a three-note chord. Tri-ad, right? Three notes. Now, when we're talking about triads in the context of music, especially bluegrass, uh, American roots music, country, things of that like, we're talking about diatonic triads. And that's just a really fancy term that means triads that are derived from the major scale. So in case you're unfamiliar with the major scale, the major scale is simply a series of whole steps and half steps that you execute after a starting pitch. So let's say for today's example, we're gonna use the key of G. So let's construct the G major scale. In order to do that, we start on the pitch G and then we go up a whole step to A, up another whole step to B, a half step to C, a whole step to D, a whole step to E, a whole step to F sharp, and then another half step to bring us back home to G. So just to review that again, that's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. After we execute those series of whole steps and half steps after our starting pitch, we get the major scale. Now how do triads come into this? To construct diatonic triads, we simply start on any pitch in the major scale, skip the note next to it and land on a note two notes away from our starting pitch and then do that again skip a note and then we're left with three pitches so if we started on g we, it would be g to b to d right so a g triad is simply g b d now how do we actually know what type of triad we're playing there there are three types of triads that we can get out of the major scale when we construct diatonic triads. Major triads, minor triads, and one diminished triad. So if we were to build triads on all of the scale degrees in the key of G major, G would be a major chord, A and B would be minor chords, C would be a major chord, D is a major chord, E is a minor chord, and F sharp is a diminished triad. Now, why is that the case? Why do those triads differ in terms of their quality, we call it, right? So we can do this by measuring the intervals between all of the notes inside of those triads. So if we start with our G major triad, we've got G, B, D, right? So the distance from G to B is what we call a major third. If we measure that on the guitar, we can just take the open G string and our B string is on the fourth fret, right? So we have to go up a half step, another half step, another half step, another half step. So four half steps away equals a major third. And then if we look at the distance from B to D, that's a minor third, right? So B, it's one less half step to get from that B to the D than it was G to B. So a major triad is simply a major third plus a minor third on top of it. Now, if we look at that A triad, that A minor triad that's in our G major scale here, we get a minor third in the bottom, A to C. It's that minor third. And then if we go C to E, it's a major third. So the formula for a minor triad is kind of reversed from what a major triad is. Now, the, the only one that we have left to kind of figure out how that formula is determined is the diminished triad. And that one's really easy. It's two minor thirds stacked on top of one another. If we do the same system of measurement, F sharp to A, F sharp on our high E string, up to that A note, we can see that that's three half steps up, and then another three half steps up to get that C note. So two minor thirds make a diminished triad. So that's where the names come from in this kind of naming convention for our triads. Now that's not entirely useful to us in terms of applying these triads to the guitar, but it's really great to know the formulas behind these triads because then you can actually start on any note and generate these triads. You don't have to make a major scale first. So for example, if we wanted to make a B flat major triad, we would simply know that we have to go a major third up from B flat to a D note, and then a minor third up from that D note 
to the F to get our B flat major triad. So that's two different ways that you can kind of think about executing triads when you're conceptually building them. You can either generate them from the major scale, diatonic triads, or you can use these formulas for major, minor, and diminished triads to use a single note as your starting point and develop the triad from that point forward. So now that we have an idea for how to construct triads from the major scale and from just a single note, let's talk about how we would actually apply this to the guitar. At the beginning of this video, you saw me play what I would like to call a harmonized major scale exercise. I was simply playing through all of the triads in root position, we'll talk about that term in a second, up the neck of the guitar. So that's what all of the triads sound like in the key of G major. Now you probably noticed that I was shifting some different string sets, and how do we actually find how to play all of these triads? Well, the easiest way to play triads on the guitar is to find any grouping of three strings so that we can spread all of those notes across three strings. We can play what I would like to call linear arpeggios, and I'll have a video on that later, across two strings, but when we're getting our feet under us for this concept of triads, it's nice to see all of the notes on separate strings so that we can view these as a chord shape or a chord grab. So the first one that I think we should work with today, let's use the, the D, G, and B string sets here to kind of make our G major triads. Now, I, I mentioned that term root position a minute ago. All I mean by root position triads is that the root note for each of these triads is the lowest note in the triad. I'm going to have a video later that describes inversions for triads, so how to reorder those triads in different ways, but today we're just talking about root position triads on the guitar. So to make a root position G triad, all we do is take our ring finger and put that on the fifth fret of the D string, and then it kind of just makes a little line going down uh, the rest of the strings. We've got our middle finger on the fourth fret of G and our index finger on the third fret of B. So that's how we make a major triad on that string set, the D, G, B strings. It's pretty cool, right? And just to kind of go back to what we described earlier in terms of how triads are constructed, that's what a major third looks like from the D to the G string. That's pretty interesting and, and something noteworthy. And then this is what a minor third looks like going from the G to the B string. So being able to isolate those double stops is going to help us for things like using these triads for improvisation and, and to dress up our melodies and solos later. So being able to kind of measure those things on the guitar is something really essential. So that's how our G major triad is constructed here. Now let's move up two frets. So there's a G, G sharp A, and let's make our minor triad. So for that one, we just bar across the fifth fret here. And then the tab on your screen will show you the rest of these. We've got our B minor triad, which is the same shape as our A minor, our C major triad, which is the same shape as the G, same shape for the D major triad. And then I'm gonna jump up to the next set of strings here to make the E minor triad. You could obviously do your E minor here, but we start to run out of some space. So let's jump up here. And that's what a minor triad looks like on the top three strings. You'll notice that the, the shapes change a bit when we move sets of strings just because of that dang B string and how it's tuned differently, right? So that's what a minor triad looks like on the top three strings. A diminished triad, our F sharp diminished right there. And then back to G major to end things off. So I think this is a really great exercise to get yourself familiar with root position triads once you know how to construct them. It's a very linear way of looking at our triads because we can think through each note in the triad as just G, B, D, right? A, C, E, B, D, F sharp, C, E, G, D, F sharp, A, E, G, B, F sharp, A, C, G, B, D. And I would highly suggest thinking about all of the note names as you play through this harmonized triad exercise that I'm going to play for you here in a second. It's really essential to be able to not just relate each of the notes in a triad to its given root note, but to know that 
a G major triad has a B and a D in it. Being able to kind of pull out the third and the fifth by themselves because this is gonna be really helpful when you start to apply these triads to your own solos, improvisations, uh, chord melody arrangements, all sorts of other things that you can use triads for. Okay, now that you have an idea what these linear triads look like in the key of G major, let's go ahead and play a little exercise that goes up and down the neck with these triads. At first, I'm just gonna do a four beat strum on each of these triads, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of cross picking for my intermediate and advanced players out there. So we're just gonna play up this set of triads and down the exact same ones that I showed you here. The tab's gonna show up on the screen, and at first we're just gonna do a four beat strum on each of the triad shapes, and then immediately after that, we're gonna do a, a three, three, two cross picking pattern on all of these triads. So just to review that, that's what we're talking about. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two. So it's gonna be uh, naming the strings, it would be D, G, B, D, G, B, D, B. You're skipping that G string on the last one. And then move to the next triad after that. All right, here we go. I'm gonna count us off and we're gonna do the strums first, then cross pick. A one, two, a one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, 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 two, ready, cross pick. All right, there you have it, my friend. A really simple exercise to get you familiar with all of your root position triads in the key of G major. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, Hayes, why are you making that position shift from the D major triad up to the E minor here? That's pretty much just to fit all of those triads into a kind of a, an easy space on the guitar so I'm not climbing up into this region on my D, G, and B strings. And then that may spur another question with you. Well, why don't we play just maybe two triads here and then switch up to the next strings? That's a great question, my friend, and you should totally be asking that. Because in my opinion, it's great once you get a foothold on these triads, playing them on one set of strings or in one configuration like we've done here today, find them in as many places as possible on the guitar. So the last three triads that we play in that exercise should be a good clue for you on how to find the rest of your triad shapes on at least the top three strings. So if that's our E minor shape right here, right, then that also means that if we just move that down to say the second fret, we've got our B minor shape, which is the third triad. And there's our A minor triad, the second triad in our diatonic triads for, for G. So you could almost play the exercise this way. Two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. And then remember our G major triad shape that we end on up here? You can use that one for your C major, for your D major, E, F sharp, diminished. So you can play them up and down the G, B, E string set as well. Starting with this one, Now I would suggest sticking with those two sets of strings at the beginning, the D through the B string and the G through the E string. And you may be asking why. So my reasoning for this is that most of your triad shapes that we're gonna be using like this on the guitar at least, are gonna be most useful as soloing devices or arranging devices. Another way to say that is playing your triads in root position down here.
it's a little less useful as a soloing device down there just because the range of the guitar gets a little muddy and most of the the triads that we're going to be concerned about in those low register are just going to be the low voices in some of our six string chord shapes so in my opinion, it's better to focus your efforts with those triads on the top four strings for now, and then kind of start to move those shapes to the bottom strings as you get more comfortable with them. I'm not saying that the triads on your lower strings aren't useful, but they're less useful at the beginning than they are toward the end of your study with triads. All right, my friend, that is it for our lesson here on the harmonized major scale and how to build triads in the key of G major. If you're one of my intermediate or advanced players out there and you feel pretty comfortable with this concept right now, my homework for you is to go through, take this exercise, and do it in all 12 keys. That's going to get you really familiar with any of the triads that you're going to need to use in bluegrass, country, and all of the related styles of music. Also, another bit of homework for my advanced players out there is to take those triad shapes that we've mentioned here and put them on the lower strings just like I talked about a second ago. Just to give you a bit of a foothold on this, I'm going to play through one time the triads on the E through the D string and the A through the G string. So here you go. Now on the A string, we're going to do a bit of shifting around, so watch out for this one, okay? All right, there you have it, my friends. All of your triads on all string sets across the neck of the guitar in the key of G major. If you like this lesson, go ahead and hit that like button and the subscribe button below so you get updates whenever I upload a new lesson here to the channel. Also, if you're interested in a PDF of all of the triads that I just played here on the neck of the guitar in the key of G major, then go ahead and check out my guitar club at hayesgriffin.com. We've got links below in the description. There you're gonna find not only the PDF to this exercise, but access to PDFs for all of the other lessons that I have here on YouTube. Thanks so much for checking this lesson out, my friends. I really appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one.